Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Apples and Tiaras vlog. I realized that I haven't vlogged with you guys in a while, so I thought my student teacher's gone today. I'll just pull out the camera. I'll talk to you guys. We'll just catch up and hang out. How about that? <laughs> um, today is Thursday, February 23rd, and I just got to school. Um, as you probably will notice, Cash is not here. Um, he's with Scott right now. And the whereabouts of both of them is kind of a secret still. So I'm not gonna share it with you yet, but um, I do have a pretty big announcement um, coming up in the next couple of videos. So today is just a regular Thursday. It's been really windy and rainy down here in the valley. And um, for the last few days, we've had some pretty chronic indoor recess. So I'm hoping that today we don't have a ton of um, rainfall or water precipitation. Hopefully we don't have a lot of that because I know my kids are antsy. They want to get outside. And I'm a little bit antsy for them. I want them to get outside. So I'm going to hope that all goes well in the atmosphere today for me. <laughs> I got these new liquid IV packs. They're the new um, immunity support drink. So it's immunity support and hydration. And they're good. It's a like... It's the wild berry blend. If you guys didn't know, I'm actually a brand, not ambassador. Well, I guess I'm an ambassador um, for Liquid IV. So I do get a coupon code to share with you guys. And then they just send me a pack of these every couple months. So if you're interested in saving a little bit of money on the Liquid IV website, I know a lot of people buy liquid IV either from Costco, Amazon. Sometimes people pick it up in the small packs at like Target or Walmart, but you can get like a whole bag. Let me show you. Like this big bag on the liquid IV website. And typically my coupon codes are between like 30, 25, 25 to 30% off, sometimes 20% off. But you know what? 20% off is still a good deal compared to paying full price. So I will put my liquid IV information down in the description right at the top um, so that you guys can get a little discount on your liquid IV. Okay, so what time is it? It is 7.15. I'm gonna get everything set up in here and then I'll walk you guys through what my fourth grade science students are doing today. One of my sweet, sweet kiddos brought me a pack of like fidget and anxiety tools for Valentine's Day. I was like, oh honey, you know my heart. He and I both always share about how our ADHD, you know, works and how each one of us is different and how each of us have different like triggers and different things that our brains do. And because both of us have ADHD, it's really nice to be able to talk to him and share how I've managed to overcome my ADHD and how I don't let it hinder me. Um, and so, so sweet of him. He brought me that squeeze ball and then two of these stretchy tubes so that I can just sit there and kind of fidget with them. Um, so I've got them kind of like stacked up in the back of my room here so that if I need it or if he needs it, um, he can ask me and he can come back and borrow one. 
Okay, another thing I wanted to share, but I first wanna put you guys on my tripod. <laughs> Okay, so my fourth graders are super duper obsessed with Crocs lately. Like they're all wearing Crocs. They love the Croc charms. They're kind of obsessed. We have our own little like Friday is where Crocs and socks day. So um, we've been kind of riding this whole Croc train for a while. So I saw on this TikTok that I follow, learning is magical or magically learning. I'll have to put the link right here. Um, but she was showing how she bought uh, Croc charms for her treasure box. And I absolutely love the idea because my kids are obsessed with Crocs. Um, but some kids don't have them. And so she was showing that she actually purchased these like Croc charm bracelets. So I actually went and spent a little bit of money um, to update my treasure box. Because <laughs> right now I have some meme stickers in there, which I mean, they're kind of cool. Um, but I also have like this huge bag of like water bottle stickers um, that I keep in here. And the kids, when they purchase prize box, they can choose um, a sticker. Or I have some little mini like erasers in here. Um, sometimes I'll get special pencils from like the school um, and I'll put those in there. But the latest installment of the prize box has been these Croc Charm bracelets and the Croc Charms, which I bought on Amazon. I think I got like 200 or something of them for like $10. So I'm like, okay, yeah, this definitely needs to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna empty all my new Croc Charms into my Croc Charm uh, baggie here. And then I'm gonna stock the bracelet section um, because I've got a lot of kids that really want the Croc charms, but they don't wear Crocs. So if they want to purchase Treasure Box, it's 40 dojo points. They can spend 40 points on the bracelet and then another 40 points on the Croc charm. Or, you know, they can do, you know, one at a time. I always tell the kids, if you have Crocs, skip the bracelet. But if you don't, hi honey, then um, get the Croc charms. So anyway, that is how I've kind of boosted up my treasure box. And I have had to raise the price because my kids have been getting a lot of dojo points. So I'm trying to show them, you know, what supply and demand is, what inflation is. I'm just trying to keep it real, you know what I mean? Like keep it like it's going on in the world. So anyway, I am gonna move my treasure box just over here. I'll show you guys how I kind of like rearranged my space a little bit. And um, then that way I can kind of show you um, my new area. So I was kind of, I had myself parked back here uh, for the longest time. Like my teacher space was back here. And I just found that a lot of students have recently been trying to sit here because it's my desk. And they've been kind of sitting back here and for the most part, they function well, like they get their work done and stuff like that. So I actually wanted to open that back table up to be another continent. So as you guys know, I organize my table groups by continents. So I have North and South America, um, Europe and Africa, and then I have um, Asia and Australia and then I have this little desk which we call Antarctica but if I could potentially I'm actually thinking about switching up the layout pushing all six of these main tables back a little bit um, pulling that table up front calling it Antarctica and it can be a space for my students that need to sit kind of outside of their groups like maybe they need to just sit alone or for whatever reason, they're mad at their teammates and they need to get up and move. I'm thinking if I can pull that to the front, then that can be a space for those students without being in the back where they're messing around. So I think I'm gonna do that this morning um, is just kind of push everything uh, back. And then I'm still gonna keep all my stuff that's back there, back there. Like that's stuff that I don't really use all the time. Everything that I use daily, I've kind of moved up here. Um, 
and so far it's been fine. And I'm really not gonna change anything else in this room, but I do wanna try out this whole like other table sort of thing. So I think what I'm gonna do is get myself set up for the day and then before my students get here, which I have about 30 minutes, I think they'll be fine. I'm gonna just kind of rearrange things, which isn't rearranging, I'm just pushing things around. So I'll show you the end result. All right, so this is what we're looking at here. We've got, we're gonna call this Antarctica. And then the rest of the tables fit just fine in here. They just go all the way back here instead of that. So I have more room in the front, which is gonna be great because then, you know, I really don't use a lot of the stuff that's on here. I might move a couple things up front. Like I'll probably move that basket up front, but like, Realistically, I don't really get into here a lot. And then this just kind of holds my stuff. So I think I'm gonna just stick with this for a little bit. See if I like it. And then uh, this way I have more room up front too. Like I can do demonstrations up here. I can even use this table for demonstrations. And then I moved my inbox up front too. It'll be up here. Um, so I'll have to tell kids about that today work on today. So I have this pack that I made a while ago. Basically what it is, is it is a sorting activity where the kiddos take uh, little cards that have been cut out like this. Um, and they are properties of seismic waves, different seismic waves. So the kid's job is to um, organize the table based on information from this passage and what they've learned about seismic waves. So this is really just a reminder, but basically they're going to fill out the table with the different properties of the seismic wave. They'll call me over to verify that they've done it right. And then there is a digital um, sorter that they will do on their Chromebooks by themselves. So they'll get to do it once with a team and then the second time they do it, they're gonna do it completely alone. Um, they have these notes in their notebooks. They have drawings on theirs. Um, they drew different waves and then they actually wrote the, the words in here. Um, and this was all after investigations and labs and things like that. So that is what they're gonna do today. And then if they finish any of it early, they will be working on um, finished or like unfinished work that needs to be done, redone or um, some sort of enrichment activity on their Chromebook.